Okay, so this is Introduction to Biology. It's our very first unit. And in this unit, we have two learning goals or learning objectives. So the first is to describe the needs of living things. And the second is to explain the organization of the Earth's system from element to biosphere. So the element being very small and the biosphere being the largest unit of organization. And we're going to focus in this lecture on describe the needs of living things. So let's get started. So I want to start by talking about all the different living things that there are because we're looking for characteristics that all living things share. So let's summarize some of the organisms to begin with just to kind of get our mind in the right framework. So the blue and the yellow here represent all of the animals in the animal kingdom. Um, the yellow is all the insects. Most of the animals are actually insects. And the blue represents all the rest of the animals. The green represents the plants, so the kingdom of plantae. This little section right here represents the fungi, and these groups right here are kind of small groups that are less familiar. These are unicellular organisms, and these are algae. These are small organisms that don't have the complexity of plants but can do photosynthesis. And then finally, we have this little slice that represents bacteria or the unicellular simplistic organisms that lack a nucleus. So we're looking for characteristics that all of these organisms share. And the first is that they are all made of cells. All living things are made of cells. So we had, and as I went through that description, some that are unicellular or just made of one cell, and then some that are multicellular or made of many cells. And if we look at this little hierarchy here, and we're going to go through this in more detail in our second learning objective, but we find cells right in the middle here. So we know, hopefully, that all matter is made of atoms, and those atoms can combine to form molecules. And in living things, those molecules could end up forming organelles, or little functional units within cells, which help to function for the functionality of a cell. And then we can take cells, and they can group together, and their function is to work as a tissue, a group of tissues working together as organs, organs working together, organ system, and finally to the organism. But the central thing in here is the cell. All living things are made of cells. Also, all living things must reproduce. They may reproduce asexually or they may reproduce sexually, but they have to reproduce. Eventually they're going to die, and so if they don't leave their genetic information behind in offspring, then their genetic information is dead. So asexual reproduction involves one parent. So here we have one cell. It copies its genetic information. Then the cell splits into two cells, and now we have two genetically identical cells. They're genetically identical to the very first cell. So there's no variation or differences in the offspring this way. Then we also have sexual reproduction, and this requires two parents. So you have a recombination of genetic information. Some of the information comes from mom, some of the information comes from dad, and as a result, you have offspring that are very different. They're very, they don't look identical to mom, they don't look identical to dad, they don't look identical to each other, they share some common characteristics, but we get a lot of variation in a population that way. And that variation is really important as we go through biology um, in a population for evolution to happen, and we'll see that later. Okay, the other thing is all living things are based on a genetic code. Now, the genetic code is the same in all living things which is kind of mind-boggling to me. Even the lowliest little bacteria share the genet same genetic code that you have. So your genetic code is kept in your DNA. So your DNA holds your genetic code, and your DNA holds the code to make proteins. So you make a copy of your DNA in the form of RNA, and then that RNA then codes for amino acids that form a chain to make proteins. And if you take away the water of your, from your body, you're left with mostly protein. So the genetic information inside of your cells is what's coding for all those different proteins that make you up and what make you different than another organism or another person. Okay, we also grow, increase in size, and develop, change. So here we have, we had a cell, the cell divided, we have two, we have four, and so now we're growing, we're getting more cells, getting more and more mass here, more and more cells, and then the cells start to change in their form. So we end up having an organism here, and that would be the development part. So grow is just increasing the number of cells, getting bigger, 
and development is how the organism forms. Well, organisms also need materials, nutrients, and energy. Some organisms can make their own nutrients using the sun's energy and water. That would be the producers. This is a little food chain. We're going to be studying food chains in more detail later. So these guys, the grass, they get their materials and energy. They get their materials from the sun. They get their, I mean, they get their energy from the sun. They get their materials from water and carbon dioxide in the air. And then the grasshopper comes along and eats the grass. The snake comes along and eats the grasshopper, and so on. The fungi are going to just break the dead, decaying matter down. But all of these organisms need materials and they need energy. And we need to constantly have this input of materials and energy. Okay, all organisms have to respond to their environment. So I have a short video to help you understand response to the environment. Let's see if you respond to your environment. Okay, so that was just meant to show you that your body responds to the environment. In that case, you are being startled, and obviously you have some kind of um, you know, reflex for that. But other things that can happen in your environment, you know, you sunlight, you taste something, you smell something, so you're, your environment is changing and you're responding to that in different ways. The next is that you in maintain an internal balance or homeostasis. So homeostasis is maintaining a, a stable internal balance um, in your, for your environment. So your environment is constantly changing, and you are going to then, in turn, respond and do something to bring your body back to homeostasis or back to balance. Some organisms are going to spend energy regulating or maintaining homeostasis, and others are considered non-regulators, and they don't expend energy. For example, you're a regulator when it comes to temperature. So as the temperature in a room increases, your body responds by doing different things that are going to bring your body temperature back down. As your body temperature drops, if the room gets colder, your body's going to do things to bring the body temperature up. So overall, your body temperature really doesn't change much, even though the environment that you're in might change. Non-regulators would just be the environmental temperature, like reptiles and so on. But we regulate all kinds of things, our blood sugar um, levels, our, um, the amount of salinity, the amount of dissolved stuff in fluids in our bodies and whatnot. So there's lots of things that we either regulate and some organisms don't regulate. Um, but maintaining an internal balance is important for living things. And the very last is evolution. And I have a little video here, but I'm going to show this in class at some point. Um, but all organisms form populations. And a population is what evolves. Individual organisms can't evolve, but a population, a group of organisms, all of the same species can evolve. So as the environment changes, those organisms need to, there needs to be change within that population. And if there's not change, those organisms either need to leave that environment or they're going to go extinct. So if suddenly there was a change in temperature in the environment and there, were, there was an adaptation where maybe a certain group of organisms had more hair and they were able to stay warmer, there would be a selection for those individuals. And in the next generation, we would see more of those individuals than ones with thinner hair, for example. So that would be the change. And change over time is evolution. So organisms could alternatively leave that environment and go somewhere warmer. But if they don't do one of those two, they would go extinct. So evolution is really important. Um, if the environment is changing, it's important that organisms, populations are going to change. Um, and we're going to study evolution as a whole unit as well. So this is a review of what we went over. Hopefully, at this point, you can describe each of these things in the list. But all living things are made of cells. All organisms need to be able to reproduce sexually or asexually. All organisms are based on a genetic code held in their DNA in the forms of those A's and T's and C's and G's. All organisms need to be able to grow and develop, so increase in size and change. All organisms need to take in materials and energy to make body parts, replace body parts, and so on, um, to do activities that they need to do. All organisms need to be able to respond to their environment. So as things change in their environment, they need to be able to respond to those changes. And then they need to maintain an internal 
balance or maintain homeostasis. And then finally, populations of organisms need to evolve. If their environment is changing, there's got to be some there's got to be some variation, some adaptations that can be selected for that make those organisms more fit in that environment. And then in the next generation, you're going to see more of that particular trait, and that's change over time, which is evolution. So that's the first lecture. I hope you understand this, that you can describe the needs of living things. If you can't, you have your textbook. You can ask questions in class. Um, but hopefully you understand it at this point. Thank you.